Popsy in my handbag? No. Oh, never mind, it's here. Do you know what time it is? Yeah. When I worked at the salon, work started at nine o'clock, not the middle of the morning. I don't seem to be able to please anybody round here. If you're not at me, your husband is. Nobody will be at you if you behaved yourself. That's what you think. Well, what's the matter with her? You should know. Well, I don't. Oh, come off it. It's only the other day that you went in that she should go. The girl's not stupid, you know. You're one of those moods, are you? What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. You must have meant something. Well, I didn't. Oh, yes, you're very good at keeping things to yourself, aren't you? And what's that supposed to mean? Nothing. Oh, I give up. OK, I did mean something. Oh? You're not letting on that you're in money trouble. Now, what gives you that idea? Just something I heard, that's all. From whom? Len. Len. That's right. All I can say is Len knows a damn sight more about her affairs than I do, then. Are you saying that you're not in trouble? Yes, I'm not in trouble. My oh. trouble or any other kind of trouble. Well, then I can go ahead and buy the carpets for the new house, can I? You can carpet the house and mink, as far as I'm concerned. What do you want, a reference from my bank manager? If you're not in trouble, why are you selling the car? For profit. It's not that I need the money. It happens to be a good deal, and I'm a good businessman. Yeah, that's true, I suppose. That's true enough. There's no suppose about it. It's just that Len seems so sure, that's all. Len knows as much about running my kind of affairs as you do, probably less. You buy what you like for the house. I'll see you later. Oh, straight up, fair club. Howard settling kind, right enough. He pushed his car keys into Bill Fisher's hand and said it pushed him the logbook on. How much does he owe Fisher now for that sell-on conversion? Ooh, about 1500 Why didn't I think of asking for his car in settlement? It's worth a flaming sight more than a bounced cheque. <laughs> Look, I'm going to see him about that cheque. Don't fret. But where's seeing him going to get you? He'll likely give you another cheque that'll bounce even higher. Well, that's a crime, isn't it? Keep passing dud cheques. So we tell the law and he finishes up in Dartmoor. I mean, I'm told it's very difficult collecting debts from blokes inside there. There's this big wall in the way for a start. Well, what do we do then? Wait till he wins the pools. We gang up on him, don't we? Gang up on whom, gentlemen? I don't follow you, Mr Piggott. I do. Do forgive me if I'm intruding. All his creditors together. You mean threatening with bankruptcy? Bankrupt who? Well, if you can't pay up, aren't Yes, I? but who bankrupt who? And why not? Yes, but for the last time of asking, bankrupt who? Howard, love. Alan Howard. It was nice of you to come so prompt. Well, I'm on holiday, Mr Sharples. You know, what teachers are always on. Well, they are, aren't they? Yeah, and it's marvellous. Like a cup of tea? I've just brewed uh, it. No, thank you. No, no. It's one of my tiny rebellions that I never drink tea until tea time. This makes me feel that little bit different to everybody else around here. Sounds like cutting off your nose to spite your face to me. Well, why have I been summoned? Well, you remember that little lad I mentioned to you? The one that's musically minded. Oh, the budding genius. I said he was talented, that's all. Yeah, so it's not all in common at his age, is it? Twelve, is it? You know, to have a few facilities beyond your years. There's a similar case in the Gazette this week. I know, I saw it. His piano teacher thinks he's another show pal. Yes, well, you'll probably end up a butcher. Tony won't end up a butcher. All right, Mr Sharple, so you're impressed with this youngster. Well, what's he got to do with me? I can play the trumpet after a fashion, but I'm no judge of musical talent. I'm not asking you to judge young Tony. What, then? Have you got a music teacher at the college? Uh, not at our place, no. There's a college in town. Do you know anybody there? Yes, yes, I know a chap called Telford. I've met him once or twice. Well, would you ask him to come and listen to Tony's play? And I'd like his opinion. Mr Sharples. What? Just what exactly are you trying to do for this boy? I'm not all that sure yet. Well, do you think he's gifted enough to make a career out of it? Oh, music? yes. Be careful, Mr Sharples. Why? Don't you approve of musicians? No, I'm just suspicious of pushing a 12-year-old into anything as final as a career. Why ever not? Better to shove him into a career than shove him into a dead-end job like a lot of my generation were. All right, Mr Sharples, I accept that you know about music you play and you've obviously got a very good ear. But I doubt if that gives you the right to meddle in a boy's life. I am not meddling in Tony's life. All I have said to him is that I think he has some ability. And that's meddling. You've already made him aware that he's something special. Might be special. Oh, he'll think he is now, pound to a penny. So, this chap Telford can tell him he isn't, can't he? Or confirm that he is. Well, I hope he does. So you want me to arrange an interview for Tony with Telford? Yes, if you would. No, Mr Sharples. It's not my affair and I don't want to get involved. 
I'm already edging more than enough older boys into careers that I doubt will give them more than a minute's happiness, and I don't want to have Tony on my conscience as well. Go and see Telford, by all means, and mention my name if you like, but that's all. You're not very encouraging. I'm trying not to be. Like I said, Mr. Sharples, it's my job to push youngsters into channels, often boring and unsuitable channels, and I find it a terrifying responsibility. It's a fact of life, Miss Nugent. Some people are less honest than others. But, Mrs. Walker, we're not discussing a man being dishonest. We're discussing a man not paying a few bills. And where's the difference? Not paying what you owe is exactly the same as stealing. You are depriving somebody of what is rightfully theirs. True, if you do it deliberately. But I'm sure Mr. Howard... Never is... to owe a halfpenny. That used to be a way of life in this part of the world, and I stress, used to be. I still wouldn't feel disposed to bankrupt a man because he's slow to pay for, well, a, a bottle or two of spirits. Here, here. Thirty pounds hardly represents a bottle or two of spirits, Miss Nugent. I sweated for that money he owes us and I definitely want paying. You didn't, though, did you? Hey, Sweat. I did the sweating. You were in your wheelchair. Well, he's still not getting away with it. I never had out for now. Didn't you? No, no, not me. Yeah, Mr. a brown and a wine. How very kind of you, love, to bring it round. Oh, sick of the sight of the shop out to get out of there. <laughs> so I can advise what's up with Jewel and Morris, eh? Well, it's an altercation. We're talking about Alan Howard, actually. Not run off with Bet Lynch, as she kept saying he fancied her. Mr. Howard owes some money, rather a lot. Hey, now you come to mention it, he ain't paid us for a month. No. Well, the plan is for us to tackle him in concert together. Can I join in? Save me having to give him black looks. I like his pajeros, you the see. The more the merrier. Right, then. Come on, cheer up, you two. Money isn't everything, you know. It's what makes life worthwhile, but it is not everything. Oh, take my advice about turn this M in here once your guts for garters. You can hide under my bed if you like. A light ale, please. Yes, Mr. Howard. I'd like a word with you, Len. With your stuff. <coughs> Haven't you got something to say to Mr. Howard, Len? Well, have you? Because I've certainly got something to say to you. What? I don't like you telling lies to Elsie. I don't tell lies to anybody. Well, making out that I'm skint isn't my idea of the truth. I think it is the truth. Well, then I think I ought to know how you reckon to know more about my affairs than that I do. The check you gave us bounced. And checks don't bounce if there's enough in the bank to cover them. You sure about You can read, can you, Alan? Look, I'll give you a warning. There's a lot of people worried about the brass you owe them. Worried enough to do something about it. But if you think there's enough funds to cover that, I'd check if I were you. Fast. Are you right, Ray? I'll have a large scotch, too, please. Don't worry, Mrs. Walker, I'll pay cash. Sharples, he's a visitor for you, then. So I see. Hello, Mr. Sharples. Hello, Tony. Sit yourself down. Well, he's told me his name's Tony, but not much else. Fancy. Mind you, lads don't talk much, do they? Perhaps they're growing up to be strong, silent fellas, eh? Well, I've a good idea what he wants, but what do you want? Well, there's no one stood behind you. Me? Oh, I've come with your loaf. That's why I'm in. Oh, why have you brought me loaf? It's never been known before. Well, why should my customers always come to me? I ask myself, I'll go to them for a change. You never know, they might put the kettle on and get the biscuit tin out, I thought. Mm, the kettle's just been on and the biscuit tin's empty. Mm, and there's me with a shop full of biscuits. Well, ta-ra, strong and silent. Try, Mr Sharple. Ta-ra. Oh. Just passing, thought to see where you left. Well, you're very welcome, Tony, but I'm just off out. On some business. What business? Don't be nosy. Can I have the key to the mission so I can play for a bit? All right, but see, you do play. And on your own. I don't want that place full of scruffy kids. You know, Mrs Sharples, I'm the only one who wants to spend any time in the mission. Aye, I suppose you are, lad. Well, off with you. I'll call him myself when I finish my business. Tony, hmm? you love your music, don't you? Suppose I must. I wouldn't want to play your organ, would I? No, lad. See you later. 
I'd like to see Mr. Telford. He'll be teaching at the moment. Well, I'll wait. He can wait for me, but I'm not sure about Mr. Telford. Have you got an appointment? No. Anything I can help with? Your name's not Telford, is it? It's Adams. Mm, well, you can't help, then. Have a seat. I'll see when he's free. Come in. Oh, I'm sorry. Thought you'd have finished your tea by now. Yes, well, we would have done if everybody had come in on time. I'm not the only one who's late. Oh, well, um, Alan's uh, not in then. Oh, no, not yet, love. Oh, well, it were him I wanted to see. Uh, Gordon's thinking of buying this second-hand car. It's a foreign make. I, I just wanted Alan's opinion about it. Well, he should be in any minute now. Oh. oh, well, I'll be off then. You haven't finished your tea. I don't happen to be hungry in any way. The atmosphere in this house doesn't encourage an appetite. What's the matter with her? <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. Ah, teenage blues, perhaps. Yeah. No. No, it isn't, Maggie. Alan's been getting at her, and so have I, for that matter. Ah, three starting to be a crowd, is it? Yeah. What's wrong, love? We have just had our first row. Only your first? How long have you been married? Fortnight. Oh, I'd say you've done very well then, not having had a row till now. Yeah, but I think the reason for this was serious, at least the reason behind it was. You, you don't have to tell no, me. No, it's a relief to talk, it's just that... Well, I have the feeling that Alan's been lying to... Not exactly lying, but not being completely honest. I've always understood that were the same thing. Yeah. I suppose it is. Money causes more passion than religion, Mr. Fairclough. You're telling me. It's something I've never desired. I've desired many things, but not money. Me neither. One good suit and enough to pay me round, does me. Oh, you crackers, both of you. I'd love to be rich. I wouldn't have minded being a rich plutocrat. Or a rich flirt. Who, me? Me, Mr. Fairclough. Driving men wild with unrequited passion. <laughs> I'd have had a different coloured sports car for every day of the week, just to sit in showing my knees. Has uh, Mr Howard always been in business, Mr Fairclough? He's always had leanings that way. I remember him doing a few wheeler dealings with uh, Navy Flower in Hong Kong. He could always afford steak and chips, but I couldn't. His wife put him on the right road, though, managing uh, hairdressers. Hey, have you got a minute, Fairclough? Yeah. Hello, Joe. Long time no see. Join the vultures, have you? No choice, Len. We've decided to have a get-together with Howard, all of us. Make our position clear. Crystal clear. How much does he owe you, Sid? Twelve hundred. But it's not just the money. I thought it was a pal of mine. And pals don't run debts they can't pay. Uh, he still owes me for that salon job. That makes two of us. How much? Well, without checking bills, I should say around about uh, two fifty. And that's only for the electrical work we did. He had heaters and... Light fittings as well. It's getting a bit unmanageable, wouldn't you say, Fairclough? And when are you supposed to meet up with Alan? No time like the present. We'll adjourn to the select. And I'm sure Mrs Walker wouldn't mind being an interested party yourself. <laughs> but Alan isn't here. Oh, 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 I didn't tell you. We've taken a vote and decided that you shall fetch him. You being his mate. Well, well, suppo supposing he won't come. I can't drag him here, can I? You tell him Mrs Walker's got a stripper on. He'll come running then. <laughs> <laughs> Just like you would. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know where you get all this rubbish about Alan being skint. Because if I, it was me, I would have checked my facts before I repeated them. That's if you don't care whether it's true or not. I can't see Len repeating something he didn't think were true, Elsie. Oh, trust you to defend I'm him. I'm not defending him. I'm just saying he wouldn't spread untruths about Alan. Or anybody else, for that matter. He's big enough to defend himself. Which he doesn't seem to be doing at this moment. I haven't had a chance, have I? You've done that but shout your head off since I came in. Well, that's certainly true enough. Well, what do you expect? You tell me Alan's in trouble and I find out he's not. Who says he isn't? He does, and I believe him. Why do you think I'm here, Elsie? Oh, search me. 
because I was sent. Sent? Who sent you, Len? Willie Pickett, Sid Lambert, Joe Mackison, Annie Walker, Irma. Irma? Alan owes them a lot of money. And they want it back. Or they're going to make a lot of trouble. That's four jills for a start. Oh, thank you. Have they signed the death warrant in there yet, Miss Eugene? Not quite, Kenneth. It's poor Mr. Howard's character they're assassinating at the moment. Rather him than me, eh? You know, you can insult people, steal their wives, kick their dogs, but never, never owe them money. I know. The milkman wants to turn very nasty with me and Val. Hello, Miss Nugent. Ken. Hello. Hello. Oh, dear. It's you, the object of all the unpleasantness. Or, uh, are you the subject? I'm never sure about those two words. I never, ever fully grasped the difference at school. One comes before and the other after the verb, if you see what I mean. That's me, Auntie Annie, Sherry, and uh, gin and tonic. Thank you, Lucille. Thank you very much. Excuse me. What's all that about? Well, I think she's trying to tell you that you're on trial. In the select. Oh. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. You? Yeah. Well, that's it then. We're all in agreement. Yeah. Which I think is a considerable achievement in this day and age. <laughs> As the bard says, Mr. Piggott. And what does he say, Emily? Something about misery, acquainting a man with strange bedfellows. <laughs> For misery, read debts. Are you getting at us, Miss Nugent? Yes, I am. I think it's disgraceful and disgusting that you should all be sitting here in judgment on a man whose only crime, as far as I can assess, is that he's been remiss in repaying a few pounds. A few hundred? A few thousand. Have you quite right. finished, Miss Nugent? I've just one thing more to say. I now know what a kangaroo court must look like. We're only protecting our interests, love. You can't blame us for that. Right. And what, may I ask, is a kangaroo court? I think I'd like to tell them, Miss Nugent, if you don't mind. I think I'd enjoy that. A kangaroo court is an illegal court that convicts a man out of hand. Well, well, if it isn't our local Welsher. <laughs> you care to repeat that outside? I'll repeat it in here if now, you like. Now, now, gentlemen, no violence. Oh, if you please. please. Now, come yeah. on, settle oh. down, will you? This is supposed to be a business meeting. For which you're a little late, Mr. Hard. We've already had our discussion and reached a decision. I that we have. Well, are you going to tell me what it is? I think you've got a good idea, Alan. Of course he has. Look, I don't even know what you're talking about, much less what decision you've come to. I walk into the bar and Ken Barlow tells me you're having a meeting in here about me. Oh, come off it, Alan. You know what's going on. Really, Mr. Hard, you must really? think we're fools. Um, yeah. We're certainly not no. that where brush is gone, no, sir. No, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look, Alan, have you seen Len Fairclough? Not since this afternoon, no. Then he doesn't know what's going on. Uh. Well, I'm very glad we got that sorted out. So am I. Now we can get down to the real business. Ray. About that cheque of mine that was returned. I'm sorry, I let the current account run a little low. It was an oversight, that's all. And you've put it right, have you, Mr. Howard? Transferred a few thousand from deposit? Well, have you? Well, I only just found out about it a few hours ago. Ha! He's bluffing! I agree. Tell him what we've decided, Langton. We want our money or else. We sue. We've talked it over and we all agree. Hmm? Well, how long have I got? I suppose you're giving me time to pay. A week, money, and by money we mean cash in yes. seven days, or we go for you officially. Yes. Well, thank you, but I won't want the seven days. Take it. Make us feel we're being fair. No, I'll contact my accountant first thing in the morning. It'll all be paid within 24 hours. Sorry to spoil your fun. Mm. <clears throat> oh, what did he say? Well, he's promised to pay us in 24 hours. He seemed very convincing to me. And I think he's the biggest bluffer since Mussolini. I'd watch that swallow if I were you. It could land you into a lot of trouble later on in life. My mum said I could drink a well dry. How long did you practice? About two hours. I've fixed up for you to see a music teacher. To teach me? Well, he might, if he thinks you're good enough. You think I'm good enough, don't you? Of course I do, or I wouldn't be going to all this trouble. No, I suppose you wouldn't. Can I have another piece of cake? You can have as many pieces as you like, lad.
You knew, didn't you? Yes. Lynn. Yes. I had no idea things were as bad as this. Do you expect me to believe that? Well, yes, I do. Why? Go on, give me one good wee reason why. Well, because you trust me. If you didn't trust me, you wouldn't have married me. Oh, come off it. Don't give me that stuff about it's a wife's duty to trust her husband. Husbands don't stop being liars because they are husbands. Look, Elsie, I told you the truth. I knew I was a bit short of the ready, but... A bit short? You must owe a fortune. No, it's an exaggeration. All right. Could you pay back Len Fairclough now? Well, not at this moment, no. No. No, I thought not. You must owe a small fortune. That's no, I don't owe a small fortune. What about the others? Don't you think, are you worried about them? The others? Of course I, though you're worried about them, and so am I, but, but Len's a good friend. I see. And now he's going to be saying to you that you've made another mistake marrying me. They'll all be saying I made a mistake. <laughs> Big houses in Cheshire, furniture, carpets. They'll have a right beano. I'll get their money, don't worry. How? I don't know. I've no idea. 